Hello everybody, it's Sanyur, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video I want to talk about Envite, what is going on with this company, how did Q3 earnings hit this company hard and what are the opportunities. We were looking at a thread from Biotech 2K1 which we've covered previous threads about this particular user on other companies such as CRISPR companies. I want to talk about all of that in this video. It's going to be a really nice Sunday video. But before we do that, before we dive deep into this company, you guys know what I will ask you. Smash that like button, destroy that like button. Really help this channel. If you have not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. That's all I ask from you guys to like, subscribe and even hit that notification bell. I ask you sometimes to share this video. That's about it, right? I don't have any merch. I don't have any courses. I have nothing to sell to you guys. And the last thing I will make note of before we dive into today's video is that I am actually approaching very, very closely to the monetization program of YouTube. So thank you so much for the support from everybody, everybody out there. Just a couple of notes on that. Once we go through the monetization program, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but basically it's ad revenue that's will be sort of accounted in and given to me, the creator. What I will do is I will do two things with that. Either I will be buying more stocks of CRISPR companies, genomics companies, or, or, or I will be donating it to your choice, right? TBD is to be discussed. We're still early yet. I'm still not monetized. I'm still waiting for that process, but thank you so much for all the watch hours, guys. Thank you so much for the support. So let's get in today's video here. Uh, Envite right now trading at almost $22 a share. Let's take a look at the past five days. You clearly you can see it had a drop at around eight late November, uh, sorry, eight late November. So basically at the 9th November, the stock crashed quite significantly. In fact, it went down almost 24%. That is a huge crash. Okay, I know some of you have gotten accustomed to it because some of you come from the Bitcoin world or some of you come from the Tesla world. But trust me, stocks going down 20, 23, 24% in a single day is unheard of. Okay, this is not the norm. It should not be the norm. This is crazy volatility, right? Uh, I mean, there's one thing side of me that tells you, you know, this builds out character, it builds its great lessons of life and it allows you to see at what point do you actually care and build conviction about a company. But then there's another side of me that tells me this is absolutely wild, right? People that have invested thousands and thousands of millions of dollars in this company, including institutions, have seen their stock basically drop 24% in less than a few hours. That is crazy, right? And again, that was due to the Q3 earnings. But the thing what I wanted to show you from the chart is this has been going for a while. In fact, if you go year to date when it peaked around late January, uh, you can see the company has tanked about 61, 62% from its all time highs. Now, I actually covered this company, in my early videos, I believe I covered it in late March. My coverage was basically the fact that SoftBank had invested in this company. So I do want you guys to know this SoftBank, the huge, huge, huge conglomerate from, uh, from the global, right? From the global side of things, they've invested in big companies in the dot-com era. They came out big uh, and they had a quite, quite a interesting return in the recent years, especially with their failure with WeWork. But my point in bringing up this story is because they are backed by several institutions that are quite notable, including SoftBank. And also ARK Invest. ARK Invest has been buying this company and they've been buying this company very hard. And in fact, you know, in their weekly newsletter, they posted uh, this section for Envite in which they mentioned that Envite missed revenue expectation, lowered its annual revenue guidance. We believe investors are also disappointed by a decrease in gross margin, which the company noted was due to a quarterly product mix that heavily emphasized low margin reproductive testing. While we sympathize with investor frustration, we commend Invite's decision to release a 14 year, 14 debt metric dashboard each quarter that should help analysts better understand Invite's increasing complex business. We continue to believe Invite's broad, broad testing menu, powerful digital capabilities, and technology stack that make the company leader in genetic information management. Finally, we estimate that Invite's oncology pro pro products 
and completion of new pro production facilities should increase operating operating leverage and gross margin in 2022. So quite clear what's going on here. ARK Invest sympathizes with investors. They can understand why it was down 22%. I still cannot understand why a company can be down 22% in just an hour after earnings. That's just crazy, but it is what it is. But in ARK Invest are basically doubling down, right? They bought a lot of Invitae shares right after that date. So basically 9th November, they bought a couple of share, in fact, a lot of shares of NVT. They're quite behind of this company. I love the perseverance and the resilience of ARK Invest at times. Um, you guys know we've covered ARK Invest a lot in this channel, especially the ARK G Fund, but as a company, as an institution, ARK Invest, when they believe in something, they double down on it, they go very hard on it, uh, and they go to the extent of actually talking to the leadership board, right? We commend, sent, the sentence is while we uh, sorry, we commend Invite's de decision to release a 14 metric dashboard each quarter that should help analysts better understand. I think that's a message, clear message, right? It's like we are behind this company, but we want them to continue production, continue producing good results, and we want them to clarify to investors in the future with information that can help them avoid these type of catastrophic results, right? Because this is bad, right? Again, when you're a retail investor, when it's just us little guys, the average citizen, you don't really have anybody to report to, right? I mean, maybe you have your partner, your significant other, or maybe, you know, if you're partnering this up with another friend or business partner, that's it, right? But these institutions, they have clients to report to. They have many, many other institutions to report to. And they have to explain why they're still invested in this company in spite of being down 20, 30% in a single week. Well, why it was down 62% from its all-time highs earlier this year. I mean, these are hard conversations to have. So that's why I have, you know, I'm quite impressed that ARK Invest are going big on this company. And that's a reason why, there is a reason, right? There is a reason why this company is, is being doubled down by ARK Invest and by other investors. And if I look at some of these charts from Q3, again, this is, was from the same presentation from Q3, in spite of missing that revenue expectations, um, the company was is built for growth. Look at this. It's jumping over. Um, it's going to be expected to jump over 60% of annual revenue from 2020 to 2021. You know, they're, they're basically, they're shifting in medicine and healthcare. Their idea is to go from a legacy analog world to a more digital world where you can earlier detection, you can personalize therapy, personalize healthcare. The risk information screening is effectively presented pretty well, pretty efficient, efficiently to patients, to doctors, to healthcare professionals. And, you know, this will come up in just shortly when we look at the thread from Biotech to K1. But they did put some total addressable market. This is from their uh, annual corporate uh, presentation. I remember covering this when we covered this company. The only thing I didn't mention in that video earlier this year is that these total addressable markets, I think you should take them as a grain of salt. I think... Uh, you look at these numbers, like ages 14, 18 to 40, they're estimating only $5 billion of, of, um, of, um, of total addressable market in the U.S. markets alone. And again, this includes fertility, conception, reproductive health, pregnancy. Do you really think this is the total addressable market from an age bracket of 22 years old difference, right? 18 to 40, all these women getting pregnant, especially with this post-pandemic baby boom that we're having, all these issues with conception of uh, fertility and reproductive questions that people are having, like no tomorrow, families decreasing in numbers, right? People are looking more at fertility issues and so on due to bad diet, bad nutrition. Do you really think it's only 5 billion? I don't think so. You know, I, I mean, again, these numbers are extracted from professionals, so I'm not going to start doubting them. But I do think these numbers are being very conservative, uh, especially that bracket here. Uh, but again, you can clearly see the total addressable market. Uh, that's the point of this slide anyways. And there is potential growth. And again, the platform is poised for rapid growth. You can see there are short-term drivers, oncology, women's health, pediatric data and anal analysis service data. I'm, I'm really bullish on building these partnership with pharma, big pharma and health system partnership. Uh, Food for thought, you know, what would happen if they partnered with like Teladoc? I don't know. Just, just throwing that out there, right? 
I don't know if, if they even have a partnership with Teladoc, but what if they do have one and what if they double down on it? Quite interesting, right? I can see an angle there. So my point of showing this uh, presentation is that things are going well for this company. They are on track. Yes, they miss expectation. But again, the quarter of a quarter game in the Wall Street world is so rigged, guys. Like you're pressured to meet certain expectations and I mean, it just doesn't make sense. You know, one bad quarter and your company's down like 20, 25%. That's absolutely ridiculous. It, it shouldn't be like that. You know, as an investor, you know, looking at these high tech companies, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be in a position to lose your, your investment by 20, 25% in a single day. That's just not the norm, right? I mean, I understand a few percent. I even understand 10%. But beyond that, I think we're looking at a huge dump I think there are several players there that are freaking out. And I again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, right? These institutions have people to answer to. I sort of understand why they want to pull out and sort of invest in other opportunities where, which there are many opportunities referred to our previous video, uh, two videos ago, where we talked about many opportunities out there. And Invita was one of them, actually. And the last thing I will say about this evolution of platform is, you know, they went from a genetic, te uh, genetic testing to genome network and where they are today, but they want to go in the route of genome management where they believe will be the highest, high yield in terms of reward, in terms of risk, in terms of where their company should be heading to. They have a mission, they have a vision, and their CEO and the leadership are doing everything to reach that to a point where they can provide information services that inform genetic and for healthcare throughout life. That is the end goal. That is the end goal of this company. Again, this is no joke. This is huge, right? This is not this is not something you can do in just a year or two. This is not something you can do with a pretty quarter. You need many, many years, much data, you need many partnerships, and you need the space to the total addressable market genomics as a whole to grow. You need help, you need incentives from government, from authorities, from businesses, from citizens to get you there, right? So this is a huge task, and I believe this company could definitely be one of those companies that hit it. Now, what I want to talk to you about in this video is this thread, right? And this is where I wanted to head, end this uh, this video with is the thread from Biotech to K1. And, it, and they made a thread, that user made a thread about the genetic information from genome sequencing that combine AI and machine learning to help patients. This is all what we've been talking about, right? The ability to sequence a person's genome predict what disease they could develop and treat them before they ever happen. I saw a study recently in blood cancers where they sequenced a single cell of each patient fed it into a machine learning program on, for oncology. Using the AI, they could develop a treatment that would work best for each patient based on their genetics. Some drugs will work better for patients with specific genes, while other drugs may end up toxic to a person with specific gene. This is all about personalized medicine and helping doctors better treat their patient. I love that. I love that. I think it's beautifully and eloquently put there. It is exactly what this company is trying to tackle as well. Personalized healthcare, personalized medicine. Everybody has its own gut system. Everybody has its own biology. Your body is not the same as mine. Yes, we are humans. Yes, we share organs. Yes, we share many of the genes. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the genes. But that small difference, right? That small difference of genetics make a whole difference in how we live our life, whether we have diseases, what is our lifespan, what is our eyesight, what is our hair color, what is our skin color, what is our pigment levels. Like, There's so many differences, right? And what this company is doing is saying, look, we have these little differences that make a whole difference of world for many people, then how about we make it personalized? How about we make healthcare personalized to a point where people are going to be willing to pay a premium? Companies are going to be willing to pay a premium, doctors, institutions, governments, to ensure that their patients are getting the best and the latest treatment for their specific body set and genetic sets, right? So in this study, the patient who had AI had helped develop the treatment had 30% better outcome than traditional patients with the same type of cancer, and Vitae is at the heart of all of this. They're using sequences from Pacific Biosciences to test and all the people request one for the use of genetic information and help to treat their patient over a patient lifetime. 
if you look at a potential for treating across the lifetime of the patient, there is tens of billions of dollars of opportunity. There is potential for testing children for genetic diseases and to help guide their diagnostics and treatment. I think there could be a lot of potential in the fertility as young adults. I think a day will come where young adult couples will have their genome sequenced and read by the AI to ensure they won't have children with dispositions to certain ge genetic disease. This is huge. guys. This is big. And obviously, CRISPR is going through this, uh, this process right now. And we all saw what happened in China a few years ago with the CRISPR, first CRISPR babies, uh, twins. Basically, um, it caused a whole ethics issue. But again, you know, I, I like to use this example, but people will, will say it's not the same thing. But when you think about it, it's definitely the same thing in the same ballpark of topic. It, there was a time, uh, let me just remind you guys, there was a time in the early 2000s, mid 2000s even, that posting your social media picture, posting your picture online was frowned upon. People would take, you would have rapists that would come to your house, you would be kidnapped, you'd be, you know, hacked, you would have this, uh, good, the government looking at you and basically uh, arresting you. There were, there was a time where people thought that, okay, and today you would be ludicrous to not publish what you ate today on Instagram. You'd be ludicrous to not post today what you think about on Reddit or on Twitter like your thoughts and so on. So just think about that shift in 15, 20 years, right? And where we will be going in the next 15, 20 years. I think this is a very possible. Now, this is going to be a lot harder than just media pictures, pixels being posted on the internet, right? This is another type of challenge. But again, as human, we move forward. The humanity moves forward. And this company is behind this, this all of this, right? Like, and Vita is all about building the informational system that links the patient genetic information to all data necessary for doctors to use the totality of that information to help an individual patient. It's about a doctor being able to tell their cancer patient, you have X, Y, Z mutation, this specific drug will work best for that exact mutation. And then obviously the tweet, tweet here is about the total address market, which we covered uh, just previously. So. My point here, and I think biotech user here, they put it quite well, is that this company is a high tech company. There are opportunities here that we are looking at right there. Again, we never provide financial advice. The stock could go way up and it could go way down, right? It went down 23%. Trust me, it could go down another 23% considering what's going on in the, these public markets these days. But my point is we don't provide a financial advice, but we can provide information. We can tell you guys, hey, look, this company is involved with AI, they're involved with data, they're involved with genetics, they're involved with biology, they're involved with basically synthesizing that information to a sense where they can personalize that healthcare, that, per, that specific medicine to that patient, right? And I think that's just beautiful. I think what's going on here with Invite is beautiful. There's a reason why SoftBank went big earlier this year. There's a reason why ARK Invest are going big on this year. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about this company. I know some of you, including Chris with Tommy, are quite bearish on this company. Some of you have sold your investment about this company in recent months. I'm curious to see your peer beer thesis, but I'm also curious to see about the bulls. In this channel, we try to visit both theses, bears and bulls, in order to allow education to pass through. That's the point of this channel. Again, we have no information for you to sell. We don't have courses. We don't have merch. We ask you guys nothing besides liking our videos, smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't. And if you have any question, comment, feedback, leave me a comments below. Hoping you guys have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. Uh, I'm just having my coffee here in this morning. So let's see what happens with this company and let's see what happens with this space as we get ready for a huge bull run in the genomics biotech space. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and take care and stay safe. Thank you so much.